thing down to where it's going to look have a little better fit and have a little room for for paint in here because see it's already just barely hitting now so eventually what's going to happen it's going to start getting worse so off we go might if i can't do this on my own well if you got a screw that won't come out like this one is what we have to do is we're going to have to drill it and then we're going to have to come back and dig it out see if i can't get this thing There should be one. Uh, try this now. Yeah, you gotta you gotta drill through to get the head off the thing so you can get it off the hinge. There we go. There, there. See, we now we got it off. Now what we'll have to do, we'll have to work on getting those two screws out. We'll use some easy outs for that. That's where my friend Joey will come in handy. He's an easy out. Yes, sir. Well, now that we got this door off, in order to plane this edge down I got to get these two screws brass screws are about to work boy they get in this lump this old lumber and they will not turn loose so we're gonna have to drill them and ease them out with some easy out the first set of things I've got are these uh, ones I bought a while back and uh, I'm gonna try them first normally I use those great big long ones I'm gonna try to see if I can find them but the first thing we're going to do, because right now, see, this has got the drill bit on one end. It's got the easy out on the other end, which means one tool does it all. So we're going to try it out and see if it works. Okay, we're going to run the drill in there first, see if this is going to work. There it comes. Seems like it's gonna work. Got it out. And the drill bit on this thing is a left-handed drill bit. Of course now I gotta get this I gotta get this thing off the tip so I can try to get this other one out. This other one's gonna be a little harder because I broke the drill bit off in there. Okay, now we move on to the next thing, which is planting the back edge of this door off. But what we wanna do is we wanna get us a, just a hand saw and saw down. So in case we take out the whole area, we'll know exactly where the hinges were on both ends. Okay, now we get the saw like we were talking about earlier and get us two saw cuts on there. If this was a normal inset hinge, it would come back to here and then we would have this piece coming all the way across. But since they just cut this all the way through, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the steps that if that was there, just to kind of give you an idea. Because once you... If you were to grind, if you, if you were to plane this edge off, you wouldn't know where to start or stop the back end of that hinge. So to begin with, you want to go all the way across and then across the back. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can do it with a utility knife.
or you can do it with a chisel and you don't want to hit it too hard because what will happen this will split and then you've got a big old crack to be hard to fix especially if it's old lumber the stuff is so brittle okay now we come in and get the final side okay we're set now we can plane it down but being that it goes all the way across These old saws still come in handy every once in a while. That's why I keep mine around. Anyway, you can see I cut my two grooves. So now what we'll do is we're going to set our router from here to this depth. So after we plane this, we'll still have the exact same depth as we do now. Okay, we've got our router set to where the depth of our bit is this depth now. Now what we'll do is we'll take our planer, clean this edge up. We'll take about, I figure about three passes because this thing was awfully tight because we don't want to have a problem later on down the road. Okay, the one thing that's going to happen is that being this has got probably 40 years of paint on there, it's going to wipe out our planer blades. take our router run across this edge first okay just to kind of give you an idea I put a mark on the back side there right back here and we'll run that router I mean even though it's all coming out I was just going to show you how we're going to just pretty much save that area Okay, well you see freehanding it, and then what we'll do is we'll come in with our knife. Once we get our hinge on top of there, then we'll come and get our knife and trim that thing back to where the hinge fits in the same place because your holes are there so that your hinge is going to fit back in the exact same place. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this off. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to follow that edge there. Okay, you can see how much is left and then there again it's just a matter of cleaning it up with a with either a chisel or a, or a knife okay now what we'll do is we'll get our hinges but one thing I want to show you that see how big these holes are what they've done is the other holes were a lot smaller 
or excuse me, were a lot bigger than for the normal screws. And so what they did, they just get the not they got the next size plus a whole lot longer. But what you can do, you, if you want to use your regular size screws, you just put toothpicks or matchsticks, either one, in the holes, and uh, you'd be surprised how well that holds. And uh, if you like, you can even put a little glue on either matchsticks or toothpicks, whatever you want to do. There again, like I said, you can put glue on there. I mean, you don't have to, but you got your choice. Take them in there. Break them off so they break at the top. Okay. All right, now the other side. All right, we got our door in. We got a good margin all the way around it. So now you've got an idea on how to plane a door without having to fool with the with the lock side. Alrighty, well good luck on your next project. <laughs>